you know, I like, I don't know, I just kind of thought about, you know, why did I get plastic surgery? Why? Last week, you know, I've been praying about it and thinking about it. I was like, when did this start with me, you know? Like, I was not enough. started as a child. Um, you know, my father was never around, obviously, until I was famous years later. You know, he was never there. I felt like, you know, he maybe left because I wasn't good enough. My mom was always working to pay the bills. We were left with um, her sisters. And I had uh, one good aunt that was like an angel. And I had one that was so abusive to me and she bullied me. And I like I had to tap into this, I had to go back, I, I put it away. She made fun of every little thing about me. You know, you better watch what you eat, you know, you're, you're this, you're that, you know, like basically picking on me. You know, she said some pretty horrible things. You know, I look at my girls and I'm like, wow, how can you even, it started me thinking I was ugly. Uh, my brother protected me though. We lived in, you know, a pretty bad neighborhood. Um, I think I was, let's see, about 12 years old. 28th Street in Las Vegas, it was rough. I was the only blonde around, and um, we lived in projects. He always tried to protect me. You know, we were just lost. We just wanted love and attention. I was born in Paradise, California, and um, we moved to Las Vegas. I was raised in Vegas, and then I spent seven years mm -hmm. in California. Um, I looked up to Anna Nicole, Pamela Anderson. Um, I remember having my mom dress me up as, when I was five years old as Dolly Parton. And I said, wow, they get attention. Like, they have it all. I read you they have no problems. And that's what I wanted to be. I went to an audition for Playboy in Las Vegas at a casino. And I was 20 years old. Everything started kind of like the same year. So I was 20 years old. I had Elijah, he was one. And I drive to this casino and I'm sitting in my car and I'm going, I can't do this. You know, when I got my uh, first set of implants, I had D's naturally, I went to double D's, you know, so you know what path I was going down. So I've been sitting in the car and I'm like, no, I'm not pretty enough. I hear all the voices, you know, all the negativity I hear in my head. I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. So I go in and the first day of auditions, there's like 500 women. Each day after that, there was like 500. They saw like 2,000 2, women and only three made it and I was one of them. It was cool, you know? I got a lot of exposure. Uh, my name was Bill. The photo shoots, I never felt comfortable, you know? But the money was good. Now that I look back, I mean, I thought it was beautiful, the women are beautiful. I just did it for attention. And I wanted to be looked at like I was beautiful because of the way I was treated when I was a child. And how I felt, I thought this was gonna solve everything. I really did. Yeah, it brought a lot to my life. Um, a lot of darkness, the wrong men. You know, I was looked at in a different way. And I like to look nice, I like to do my hair, my makeup, you know. I'll take some selfies, bikini selfies. Uh, would I ever get nude again? No, I would not. Because I think that it's your temple and you need to, you know, respect that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't want to show my daughters that. There's just a lot that goes along with taking your clothes off and letting the world see you naked. 
I did that and then I was moving from a townhouse um, with one of my girlfriends and my small baby and somebody broke into my house and I caught him halfway through a window with a huge knife, called the cops, threw a candle at him and that night I was laying in bed. After all this happened, I was so scared. I saw a commercial for Master Toddy's kickboxing. The next day I signed up. Within four months I was fighting. A lot of different experiences um, brought me to my knees, which made me look up to God. You know, what do I do from here? Mm -hmm. Where do I go? Mm -hmm. You know, so I've ruined my life. That's why I, I didn't go to church. It's because I felt ruined. I felt dirty from the time I was a kid because I was touched. Mm -hmm. I was molested. I was, you know, bullied by my aunt that told me the most evil things. I've always, you know, wanted a dad. Always just to love me and protect me. And I was missing that, you know. Uh, Master Toddy taught me how to fight Muay Thai kickboxing. He was a father figure in my life. Mm. I think that if I didn't have him, I would have ended up being a prostitute because that life that you get into leads That's down a road. Mm. So he saved my life, basically. I had Elijah, I was pregnant at 18. Had him right when I turned 19. His dad passed away um, seven years ago. That's why we moved to California. He was in a motorcycle accident on Halloween. Um, it was, he died, one of my closest friends. Um, so Elijah will be 20 March 7th. I uh, married somebody in my 20s that I was with for about 10 years. I have a daughter with him. Her name's Aspen. She's 11 years old. I was pregnant at 35 with Brooklyn Rose. She's three. And I have a set of um, twins. They're 16 months. So right after that, we're at 38 I had them. So um, the twins are, I have a boy named Cross. They're fraternal twins. And then Sydney is the girl. Okay, so my first set, uh, I was 20 years old. Um, I did not need them. My mom clearly has, you know, breasts. You know, it was passed down to me, so I should have felt better about myself. But I, I wanted giant boobs, like the rest of the girls, and I thought it would, you know, cover up what was really going on inside, but it's basically putting a band-aid on there. Right. So I got saline implants. Um, I, I went like 680 cc. That is huge. I just, um, I wasn't confident. I felt like I needed it, just, I mean, it was fake confidence. It, it just started this alter ego of mine. But I liked the attention, even though it was the wrong kind. You know, I always trained um, my back. Yeah, I put some pressure on my back. I didn't like it. And they were always in the way, so I figured um, after I had Aspen, I was going to, um, get a reduction, uh, get smaller ones put in, and a lift because of course, you know, I'm in a fitness industry and I still cared about the way I looked when I, I should have just took them out. And so I, I talked to the surgeon and I said, are you sure these are safe? And um, he's like, yes, they're safe. If they're gonna leak, you will know that day. So I went smaller, got the lift, and it filled out the pocket, you know, because I got more in shape as the years went on, more muscle. Um, by the time I was like 30, 31, I was just more muscle than you know anything. So you know that you're gonna lose some of that tissue. So I cared and all the fitness models had them and you just, you know, I still wanted to look, that's what I thought a woman looked like. I mean, since I was 20 years old, I knew I would kickbox professionally. I would do um, MMA at the end of my career and then I would be done. I would do some boxing fights in between. So after I had some fights, my last fight was 31. I felt great, but certain things started changing. Uh, probably about 33, 34, slight change. A little more fatigue, not recovering you know, as fast, but still not to where it has been the last four years. 
just tiny little things. I thought, oh, it's from training. You know, I went through a lot. Ivan's death, my, what my son's going through, you know, losing his father. You know, I blamed everything else. Um, I started uh, getting numbness up my arm, down my arm to my fingertips. Um, I always had these knots on my shoulders that wouldn't go away. I'd get massages, um, my joints started hurting. And then in the last four years, it just got worse and worse depression. My looks changed. I was fatigued. My eyesight about um, I, my license, I needed to renew my license. And so I, you're supposed to you go in, you do the eye test. And that was three years ago. And I said, Mama, I, you know, I tried these new glasses. I went in. I didn't pass eye. So I said, I needed more glasses. You know, what's going on? You know, and then completely over the last like four years, now I can't see. The last month, it's gotten really bad. I can't see out of my left eye, it's completely fogged. But I didn't put it together. I said, how am I gonna fight again? How am I gonna do this again? I didn't have enough energy to even, you know, my mom said, oh honey, your eyes sometimes get worse. You need another prescription. It wasn't that. So my license has been expired for three years. And there's been days that I can, I'm fine where um, the last month's completely gone. So I got very, very depressed, um, postpartum. You know, they tried to write me uh, prescriptions for antidepressants. I went to a doctor for my lymph node because now I guess the silicone affected that. And my breast implants are linked to lymphoma. She told me, oh, you're fine. I showed her, um, that's not fine. Um, I showed her that my breast started hardening. Oh, you're fine. You'll be okay. And then uh, I remember just with everything I was feeling, I just, I remember driving myself to a place in paradise. It's called Lookout Point. And people would drive their cars off. There was, you know, fences there. And I said, how am I gonna do this? Just like something changed in me, mentally, physically. And I said, you know what, I, I just can't, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I sat there and I was gonna find a way to make it off that cliff. And I thought about my son, Elijah. And I was like, why, why, this is not me. I'm not weak, what's going on, you know? I can't do this, like, I'm all he has. He already lost his father. But you don't know, like, certain things affect your body. I think it might have messed with my, um, my train of thought. And I eventually wanted to have a faith-based gym in Las Vegas, so I moved back to Vegas. I was there two months, and I got a job offer um, by the WBKFF, the World Bare Knuckle Fighting Federation. And they had some pretty big names fighting on this card. I helped match make. I did everything. I moved out here. Um, they paid me to move out here. And then they never paid me again. They never paid the fighters. So this show I worked on, that was really hard, you know, even with me being sick, but I pushed through it. Um, you know, it was just like, I felt like, why did I even come out here? Well, I uh, prayed to God for a gym to go to and Phoenix CrossFit came up. Something just was drawing me there. So I went there and I met Laura. And uh, we really couldn't figure out why we were supposed to be friends. We we're gonna be training partners. She put me, you know, she took me under her wing. And um, a couple months into everything, we we're sitting in my driveway, and she was talking about my lips. And I was like, "These are my lips. I had fillers, and I did Botox years ago. You know, that's what you did in Las Vegas. Obviously, you know." boobs, you do that, but um, I did permanent makeup, I did tattoos around my, around my mouth, and um, you know, it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> but the other stuff doesn't last anyway, so that's what she was talking to me about. And then she asked me about my boobs, and I told her, you know, this one is uh, painful, it's a little hard right here, and I got something like right here that's different since the kids. And I showed her, and she goes, honey, you have a ruptured implant. 
and she told me that she almost died 28 years ago. She went through the same thing. And at that moment, the last four years of my life went through my head. I didn't say anything. I instantly started crying. I cried, I cried, I cried. And I went upstairs, my mom held me. We realized, you know, this is what happened. And then we were um, at a surgeon that Saturday that confirmed it, that I've been suffering from breast implant illness. Um, they need to be removed, I have a ruptured implant. So if it wasn't for Laura and Phoenix CrossFit, I think I would have probably just not woke up one day. You know, that's why I was meant to come here. It's urgent, yes. But without the funds, you know, you can't get the surgery. You can't go to the hospital and get it. Um, I had a, an honest donor pay for the remainder of my surgery, thank God. Um, I feel guilty that I'm getting the surgery tomorrow and there are women out there that are suffering and they're not gonna get better because they can't afford it and uh, they didn't know the warnings just like me. A lot of them don't know they're sick. I feel like I'm, I'm dying daily. And in the last month, I mean, everything has just went down. They're gonna test the fluid for their, what, for the ALCL cancer that it's linked to. Um, they'll know if there's tumors in there. They're gonna send uh, the capsule part that's around the implant to, um, and if this doesn't go down, which I honestly, I don't think it's gonna go down. I think they're gonna need to remove it. And if you look at like the cancer um, symptoms, I'm not trying to be negative, I believe in God, it's all in God's hands, but it's the first sign of lymphoma that I have right now. And I know that, and I know my family, the ones that I have that do care, they don't want to think that. I know Laura doesn't want to believe it. I know people don't, but it's reality. So how many women have to get sick? How many women have to die? How many women are don't even know they're sick right now are, you know, this is what makes me mad. The messages that I'm getting. I'm glad you're getting your surgery, but I don't know how much longer I have to live because I can't afford mine. Are you kidding me? How do we not see? You can't get a surgeon to take them out. You're going to let them suffer because they got plastic surgery. Well, you know what? They were not warned just like I was not. And I'm not anybody to, to say anything but my experience and you know, look into it before you get it. I'm not gonna tell a cancer patient that got her breast removed not to get an implant. I'm gonna embrace women no matter what and their decisions just, you know, what happened to me has been scary. It could kill me. I still have to make it through surgery and I have five kids that need me. And I have a world out there that, you know, needs to be empowered and needs to know that, hey, you don't need plastic surgery to be beautiful. We have to, we have to embrace this. It doesn't matter. You know, we all have insecurities. People try to say, oh, I would never do that. Oh, I'm better than that. You don't know what that person has went through in her life. You don't know how she's feeling. You know, have a little compassion love one another that's all we're really supposed to do you know uh, if i could do it all over again i would never do it uh, i have ran a faith-based gym for over seven years and it changed my life i gave back i helped kids that were bullied i helped train kids that um you know were getting bullied because you know of who they loved you know what choice you know for being gay um, I helped with a ministry of men who were drug addicts, people that have killed people. I helped them through martial arts find their inner strength and have confidence. And I help women know that they're strong and they're beautiful. And um, that changed my life, that impacted me in a way that I will never ever be the same. And I just want to make it through surgery so I can do that again. And God's grace in my life has been amazing because all this fades one day. It really does. It fades. You know, but what you, you know, even fame, money, it all goes away. But what people remember is how you treated them and the way you made them feel. So I think it's important 
to take away from, you know, all the hours spent and working on everything, these surgeries, it's taking time away from what our real mission is on earth. And that's to help one another. And there's people hurting, you know, to be kind. You know, one uh, random act of kindness at a time. And I think that if we all just did that a little bit, just gave back a little bit, it would take the pressure off of, you know, the worldly things, the way we look, you know. I rather, I look in the mirror right now and I know I'm sick, but I feel more beautiful than I ever have because I know my heart is pure and I know I have good intentions and I wanna help people. You know, it's not about what you see. It's about this, this shines through. You know, it's powerful, love is powerful. Um, there's just, there's so much to say really. Oh, I just, you know, for four years, I've known something's been wrong with her. And I see her getting weaker and to see the lymph node up. You know, I thought, well, maybe she's stressed because she, the babies, you know, having the children, they're so close in age and her being pregnant and just, I mean, she never stopped. Even though she didn't feel good, she, she trained. She worked at her faith-based program. She is ill. I want, what I would like to see happen is for the medical insurance companies to acknowledge the breast implant illness, to acknowledge for this right now to reach everyone, every woman, every man, every one, every child that feels insecure about themselves, everyone to know right now got to think about what you're doing in life. You got to think about, do you need this? Do you need all of these changes to be someone you don't? Love yourself. A normal day is she's trying to do as much as she can with the kids. And it's, it's hard. It's not easy. And uh, I mean, because you know, a set of twins that are just turned 16 months and a three-year-old, she just turned three in December. It's a lot of work and uh, it's not easy. And so we get up in the morning and we feed the children, we cook the meals together as a team and uh, we have fun, but it's just a lot of stress right now because we're wondering every day how, how sick she is really what's going to what's the outcome going to be you know we're just struggling every day the situation of us even moving here was bogus but thank god we're here because we met the right people we met laura she's just amazing she saved my daughter's life it's scary i have my up and down where is she going to be all right how far has it progressed you know women need to know about this everyone needs to know so they don't make the same mistake you know it's I'm, no matter how much sleep i get well right now i'm not sleeping at all but before i knew i was always tired um i'm up throughout the night with insomnia so by the time i get up um, i just it's hard taking care of my kids i want to take care of them so i just push myself and then i go through you know, my outbursts daily, you know, I go from praying to being angry that this is happening. And my mom gets up, grabs a hold of me daily and looks in my eyes. Says, you must have faith. You need to push through. And then I cry and then I'm okay for a couple hours and then just repeats. You know, we try to be um, as positive as we can because that's how I want to raise my kids. I don't know what we would have done without the anonymous donor. I don't know where we'd be. And you know, they hide it. They hide. It's like women are embarrassed because they did it. And then 
they get told, well, you know, you did it, it's your fault, you know? You know, my kids could lose their mom. Their lives would be affected. How is my life not valued? Twenty-eight years ago, I went through a very similar thing as Latasha. I live here in Illinois, and I had implants put in 1990. Always a very healthy woman, never a problem. Four months after, a series of problems started. Within two years, I went to every doctor you can imagine. When you have to listen, please. They tell you it's in your head. You begin to think you're crazy. It's very real. It's not an open wound. So you can't see the pain. It is like you're dying from inside out. I've been there. I got them out and I got better. 70% of the symptoms go away when they're removed. How can you say this is not cause and effect? Nobody wants to be sick. It's not the money. It comes from the heart. Please listen to what we're saying. Stop the lies. Be responsible for what you've done. You've got the studies. You know the truth. Sick for two years. I'll give you a little sh shorter rundown of what happened, but it's very similar. Um, and the amazing thing is that breast implant illness doesn't discriminate. I was a housewife. She was a celebrity, a playboy model, a fighter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean what reason you do it for. It's, it doesn't discriminate. The illness is, it affects everybody. Um, so 28 years ago, um, same thing, breast implants. Um, husband didn't want me to get them. I was like, ah, put the air back in them. Never really, the complete opposite than Latasha. Never had an obsession that I need a bigger breast. They're cute, they're little. I nurse my babies, oh, put the air back in them. Two week decision, never. And I would honestly say if I did ever think about it, I really never thought about it, it wasn't an issue. Um, four months after I got them, um, of course told by the plastic surgeon, perfectly safe. Now this is 28 years ago. And here I am talking about it again. It's just, it, it's been so emotional. I do everything I can not to ball through this whole interview because I'm living this. I look in her eyes and I see me 28 years ago. So uh, two years, every doctor is a depression. How's your marriage? You know, you do have three small children, always healthy, active. Um, every doctor, my husband will go to as many doctors as we need to go to. Um, so I ended up going back to the plastic surgeon because I thought he would tell me the truth. I thought, what has changed in my life? And the only thing that changed is I got implants. It was to the point, fatigue, I could barely get out of bed in the morning. And anybody that knows me, I'm full of energy. Um, and um, body fatigues, aching, brain fog, everything Latasha's feeling, I felt. And I went back to my plastic surgeon and I basically very calmly said, I'm very sick. And if it's my implants, please tell me. And I'll never forget, tap me on the leg, now, now. There's no scientific data to prove why you're sick, but I'll take your implants under a local in my office. I'm like, get them out of me. I made the appointment like two weeks I was, supposed to, I was supposed to go. And I'm at my grandma's house one day and I'm watching Jenny Jones. And she has a series of implants. Um, she became public, which, you know, it's an underground of women. It's very, especially for somebody in the media to come public. It's a very private. People don't just say, hey, by the way, I had breast implants or I had breast implants. And um, I was watching her show and I was watching me. Every symptom, every single symptom. And there's a support group on the bottom, a phone number. And that night I called a woman and a woman named Vicki answered the phone. And that was my lifeline. That woman saved my life. Um, she said, do not go back to that man, he will kill you. Um, what he would have done in the office is, um, so when you have anything foreign in your body, it forms a capsule around. So the capsule, when we speak about implants in a capsule, is the capsule is your friend. And the proper way of removing a breast implant is to go around that capsule and take it out in a hole, and then you open the capsule up and see if the implant is ruptured or not. Just because um, there's a rupture doesn't mean you can tell. It just doesn't disappear. It stays within that capsule. So the proper way is doing it where you take it out as a capsulotomy, a capsulectomy, and you put it out and then you open it up and make sure. My surgeon was going to cut through the same incision, cut through the capsule, possibly rupture the implant, if it wasn't ruptured, pull it out and leave that capsule in my body. I'm already having an immune response from my silicone. So I would have never gotten better, ever. So that woman got me in contact with different doctors. The problem is uh, doctors didn't acknowledge the illness. It's very much of a brotherhood. So uh, we found a neurologist in Texas. I had three small children and um, we needed $10,000 to walk in the hospital because at that time, 28 years ago, insurance companies were not going to pay for a product that may be faulty. 
We were in the middle of this fight. So the hospital's like, well, we're not touching these women. Even though we had a doctor there willing to say these women are sick, we needed the money. So we took $10,000 out of my husband's 401k and we left our small children. And I remember looking at Scott and crying and saying, what if this isn't the right place? And I remember thinking, because I had been knocked down so many times, you know, it's in your head, you know, you're just depressed, you're, you know, it's just everything else but what it was, because it's not an open wound. The thing is with these women, if you look at Latasha and you looked at me back then, you couldn't see I was ill. I was deathly ill. I felt like I was dying from the inside out. And that's, that's part of the problem. It was a new disease. Because it was just being discovered, it was so new, we didn't have actual diagnosis. Breast implant adjuvant illness. Silicone adjuvant illness is what it actually became. So I looked at Scott and I said, what if, because we're spending $10,000 and he just looked at me and he said, we're going, we're at the right place. And I remember one day, just be done with doctors. And I looked at Scott, who was, was my savior, the amazing supportive man who a lot of women don't have. A lot of women lost their husbands. They got their implants for their husbands. They got sick. They're gone. So I just said to him, I said, you know what? I don't want to go to any more doctors. And he said, we will go to as many doctors because I just want my Laura back. And the biggest significant thing for anybody that knows me, I stopped talking. I stopped laughing. Um, I look at Latasha and I just remember that pain. I remember the helplessness. And every morning waking up and wishing yourself well and not want to talk about it anymore. You know, Scott would call me, he's like, how are you today? And he knew how I was, you know, but you do, you get to a point that, you know, um, you're just done talking about it. So we got on a plane and um, we went to Texas and there is where I met three floors of sick women. And that's when it became real. And I was scared, but I knew that, um, that everything was real. So my surgery, now remember the doctor was gonna take my nodural local out. Um, my surgery was five, under, five hours to get my implants out and mine were not ruptured. Silicone breast implants uh, leak silicone 24 hours after they're put in your body. The companies knew it. Now this we're talking 28 years ago. Some difference between um, textured and smooth with the illnesses, but for the majority of it, the illnesses are pretty much the same. And when we talk about the fluid around the implant, that's the cancer, it's not so much the implant. You have the shell and you have the implant, and what's happened is the fluid has been developed in the middle of it, and that's where the cancer develops. It's not breast cancer, it's cancer of the fluid that's caused by, mainly textured, still can be caused with smooth. More prominent they're seeing it in textured. So I meet all these women, and um, it's a day I'm gonna get my implants out. And I remember looking at um, the microvascular surgeon that took mine out and I was petrified. Because a lot of these women I know are never gonna get better. And I just looked at him and we thought I had two ruptures. This is how, even now, if it's ruptured, you don't know it. It's not like a mammogram, nor do you wanna get a mammogram, it can rupture them. And I just was scared and he looked at me and he said, I'll take your care of you. So it literally, I know this is hard to believe for, for for, for people, but literally the next day, it's like somebody removed the fog out of my brain. It was, for me, it was instant. And, and I said, how can I feel so much better? It is the cloud got out of my brain. And he said, you are one of the lucky ones. He said, you were young, you didn't have them ruptured, and you were healthy. And he said, it's like we took the logs off a of fire. So your immune system was willing, was ready to calm down. So then it was time to leave these women that were not gonna get better. And I went to every room and I told them that I was gonna go back home and I was gonna be their voice and I was gonna fight. And um, I left them with so much document. At that point, um, uh, I had so much documentation of what the hospital knew and when they knew it, and uh, not the hospital, I'm sorry, what the manufacturers knew. So Scott and I came home and we started a support group. You know, doctors are either have blindfolders on because they just don't want to deal with it. Um, it's out there. It's, it's 28 years later. Every fire we started, they put out. I mean, from, from Oprah to Jenny Jones to picketing in Chicago to speaking in Washington with Ralph Nader. I mean, I just became a voice. And my husband, God love him, he would support me and be right next to me. He said, please don't let me talk. I'll be right there, but I realize there's 10 million people watching me. You haven't figured it out yet. I'm like, I don't care. I mean, he was amazing. There were times I'd be up till two in the morning talking to women because it was because of that woman that I 
it got better. Um, after two years, it literally consumed my life. And I finally had to take a break. I'm like, okay, I gotta take a break. And um, there is um, things I'm passionate about. And anybody that knows me, they know what they are. Um, and one of my passions um, recently is because of what I've been through. You know, I always thought I was naive. I never never thought that, that, that doctors would lie or that things would happen in government that shouldn't happen. I mean, call me, yeah, I was really naive. And um, that's not really the truth. God puts people in your life for a reason. And I knew when I met her, there was something about her. So uh, I could see it in her eyes. I, and I knew that day I was waiting to ask her and I had a feeling she, would, she was sick. So we'd be at the gym and now she's training for this bare knuckle fight in April. And we'd be at the gym and she just, I couldn't get, she just couldn't, there was just something. She just, I'm like, come on, Latasha, you know, you're a fighter. And now it all makes sense. It just all makes sense to me. So um, I'm gonna be with her. She has an army around her. Um, I'm blessed with incredible supportive people in my life that are now embracing her. And uh, I've been there and she's gonna be okay. And she's gonna come back and she's gonna speak and she's gonna be somebody else's lifeline. I was her lifeline, the same as somebody else was mine. And um, it's real and women need to talk about it. You know, we need to figure out why. It, again, it doesn't discriminate. Normal, everyday housewives. You don't have to be Latasha in the, in the celebrity, you know, spotlight. Everyday moms that are caring for their children are sick. There is no safe breast implant. I am not gonna sugarcoat this. I'm not gonna say she was just unlucky. I'm not gonna say, oh, you know, if something just went wrong. You had a bad plastic surgeon. No, I'm not, that, that's not it. The reality is there's so no safe breast implant. At one point, they are going to fail on you. And by then, you have symptoms. And um, that's the reality. And I'll come back out now, and I will be a force with this girl. And uh, we'll try to save as many women, either from not doing it, or that are sick and don't know it, or have the potential of getting ill and decides they want them out. We're going to do this together. Yeah. Seriously, I mean... It's uh, her journey has gotten her right where she is right now. And she's gonna be a force. Oh. And I wanna tell you, Laura, too, thank you. Because um, I don't know, I don't think I would've lived too much longer. Thank you, you didn't know me, you didn't have to help me, but you chose to do the right thing, you know? And I, I believe in God even more now. Tell me I about just, it. I just thank you for saving my life. You're welcome. I love you. You're going to be okay. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is the start of a new life. You're going to be okay, baby. I know it. It's pre-existing. You're, you know, it's something plastic surgery is not, it's not covered. That's how they get you to. So... Yeah, you know it's not right. It's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a very tricky slope. I mean, because an insurance company, why are they going to pay for a faulty product? You know, it's it's definitely uh, you know, there's some amazing support groups out there right now, and um, they are well more rounded now in this area than than I can really even speak about. Um, because again, for me, it was 28 years ago, but it's really not much difference as far as the illness. Um, I can't even get insurance right now. I had it in California to Vegas. As soon as I got here a month, it got canceled. And now I can't get it here. My kids have it through the state, but they won't give it to me because I have uh, something pre-existing and I don't have the money to buy it. You know how beautiful you are? You're so beautiful. You're perfect. Just the way God made you. Can you say hi to our new friend? Is mommy surgery gonna be okay tomorrow? It's gonna go good? You gonna pray for me?
I still want to go back to school. Um, what was that like two and a half years ago? Me and um, the baby's dad, we decided we were going to go and do online schooling for Phoenix Ministry and Phoenix, which is crazy because it's the gym that saved my life. So I told him I wasn't ready, you know, we had split up, I was gonna wait. You know, I put it off, put it off, I have not heard from them. And um, when I found out I was sick, two days later, they called me. They're like, okay, when are you gonna start? Every other day they called me, called me, called me and talked to me. And I put it together um, just yesterday with her. I was like, you know, Phoenix Ministry. And I was like, wait, Phoenix Gym. You know, rising from the ashes and everything. It's just, I really feel that God's saying, hey, I'm gonna get you through this, but you're gonna do what I want you to do now. So I was like, I can't, I have to do this. I have to do it, no matter how long it takes, I have to go to school for this, and I have to, you know, preach the gospel. Like I got um, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, I will walk by faith, even when I can't see. Um, I got these, I got one tattoo when I was 18. I, yeah, it doesn't matter. But I got this and uh, guided by God when I uh, got my gym. And it was because there's a lot of um, people that came to my gym that didn't believe. So I, you know, they started asking about my tattoos. And so it was a, a way that I could talk to them about it. Can see. You can see out of both your eyes. Yeah. Let's see. Um, pain. I am pain. Yeah. That'll go away. One day at a time. You're gonna recover from this. There's no doubt. I thought for sure I was gonna die. There was no way I was coming back from this. You know, and I thought, maybe this is the time that I'm not gonna slide through, you know? Maybe I have no more lives. I'm not a cat, you know? I have no more lives. This is the one, and I said, wow, I'm. this is what's gonna happen. Over boobs? And I was like, is that the price I'm paying for being vain and caring? You know, and then I said, I deserve that if I, you know? I'm going to deserve it. It could have been so much worse. And the fact that I, I get a second chance at life is, is overwhelming. You know, I feel undeserving sometimes. So, but it puts me at a different point too where, you know, I have to do things different because I do get another chance. What I want to say is Latasha's always been a fighter. And since she's had this, them explanted, I, before she found out if she had cancer, um, she thought she was going to die. And so it affected her mood every day. And, and then when she found out that she didn't have the cancer, it was like that girl that was back at the gym preparing for a fight. She's back. She's back. And I'm just, I'm grateful. And uh, I can see the change in her. And I'm just grateful that my daughter's going to live. 
they found capsules, one that was way thicker than the other one, the one that was ruptured. Um, no tumors, nothing like that. It was a pretty bad rupture. And I don't know, it looked fossilized almost. I don't know how long it was in there. Um, the doctor scraped me really well. The second and third week was the hardest. It was, big time. Like, I felt like I couldn't breathe. My symptoms, like, I was just so tired out. I thought I had cancer for sure. Um, my lymph node is going away. It's getting smaller. Um, my cancer results came back negative. Thank God. Um, I've lost over 10 pounds. Um, all the inflammation in my body is gone. Um, I can swallow. I have not had any anxiety attacks, heart palpitations that I used to have. It took probably two and a half weeks to go away. And that was <clears throat> a little longer side effect, I think, but it went away. My voice even feels different. My brain fog is gone. Um, I was able to go back to the gym this week. I mean, it's, there's no known approved breast implants. It's, it's the same thing. It's all the corporations, there's a lot of money. And, and yes, at this point, there is a point now that there has to be some responsibility on the women to do their own research, even if the doctor's telling them one thing. I mean, we're, the women are out here trying to, trying to warn them, but the majority, it needs to be an informed choice and the doctors need to be telling the truth about what's going on with these women. They're seeing them, they're seeing them sick. The problem is the illness is like you have the flu, or the fog. Well, why would you go to the doctor for that? How would you put the connection with your breast implant? It's an autoimmune. Well, you know, unless unless you're researching it, you're finding out that this is what it's causing, you know, so instead you go to different doctors that aren't finding anything wrong. So over and over, you're, you're sick and you're going to different doctors and nobody knows what's going on and, you know, you, you know your own body. And you get them out and beautiful things happen. You get your life back. Well, when the brain fog left and the confusion and pretty much me running in circles, you know, I sat in a recliner and healed for five weeks and uh, my whole life just was like a movie in my head. I can go back 10 years ago, you know, five years ago, a couple years ago and realize mistakes I've made, you know, relationships I should have fought for, but I was so sick that I couldn't think, you know? So I kind of pushed everybody away. I just kind of put up a wall and um, it's hard to realize. You know, my three-year-old told me, mom, I'm always going to take care of you. She grabs my face and looks at me and she said that my implants were eggs. She said, you got your eggs out, you're better mom, you don't have to go to the doctor no more. Um, it was hard not being able to hold them, but I'm so much happier. Like it's, it's a gift to be able to be a mother and to take care of my kids. So I look at life different and I think that uh, they can see that and they can feel that. I'm not grumpy, I'm not tired, I want to play with them and they feel me. I like it. I didn't know my butt was as nice as it was. <laughs> <laughs> because the boobs, you know, the boobs like took away from what I have naturally. No, we should all love ourselves. All different shapes and sizes. There's beauty in every single person. Um, but I looked at myself just different. You know, and I remember the boobs do not look pretty right after you explant. And I was looking in the mirror and I had these scars and they were swollen and it was just not, it was not pretty. And I looked at myself and I no longer looked at what the world looked at. I finally saw myself for who I really am and I'm, I'm beautiful inside. And it didn't matter. I was healthy, I was getting a second chance at my life. and. Matter. You could fix the outside, but the inside could be an empty shell. With something like that, you just, you have to look somewhere else. You can't look to the world for acceptance. You're always going to go down a dark road.